Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Government defends decision to deport 37 Haitians. Health Minister says Cornwall Regional Hospital project back on track. And later in sports, reggae girls given major injury boost ahead of the World Cup opener against France on Sunday. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shamela Pullen. Here are the details. The government says it is satisfied with its decision to deport 37 Haitians who came into the country illegally last week. Information Minister Robert Morgan was responding to criticisms about the move at today's post-cabinet press briefing. Kalisha Williams reports. The 37 Haitians who arrived on the coast of Portland recently will be charged with illegal entry and deported to their troubled homeland. Its a decision, Information Minister Robert Morgan says, will not affect international advocacy for Haiti, which is experiencing ongoing unrest. Minister Johnson Smith outlined that Jamaica, um, who is a signatory to all the relevant protocols as it relates to um, persons who find themselves in these positions, and we are ensuring that we follow these protocols. She also revealed last week that none of the persons um, who came to Jamaica uh, were, uh, had applied for asylum, and without that application, I suspect that the government has no choice but to um, enter onto the path that we have, we have, we have gone on. Mr. Morgan, in response to persons who are unhappy with the decision, noted Jamaica was not the final destination for the Haitians. There have been circumstances in the past where due to the trade winds, they, they are seeking to go to the north, but they end up in the south. So I'm not speculating, don't want to speculate, but because they have not applied for asylum, then a particular process has to take place under Jamaican law. He says the government will continue to lobby with international partners to assist the poverty-stricken country. Um, the Prime Minister is currently in Brussels, where he has had several meetings with our European partners. And one of the big issues that he has been pushing is asking for more assistance and stronger assistance for the Haitian people um, within the global community. Um, the, the, the CARICOM group was also in Haiti recently to continue discussions with the various stakeholders as it relates to seeking a permanent um, solution for the challenges that they face in Haiti. Kalisha Williams, TVJ News. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton is reassuring Jamaicans that section of the Cornwall Regional Hospital in St. James will be ready by the middle of next year. Parts of the Type A facility have been closed for renovation since 2016. But after several delays, Dr. Tufton says the project is on track. Uh, where we are now, though, is that we are in a point, at a point where the core building is now solid, has been made solid. And the final phase of the contract is a design and build out, if you will, which means the internals, so the windows, the doors, the wards, and the equipment to be placed in. Um, it's going to take longer than the middle of next year. Uh, but what we envision is that once we start, we will phase the reopening. Meanwhile, Dr. Tufton provided an update on the malfunctioning equipment at the Kingston Public Hospital. A number of persons using the facility have been complaining about delays in getting certain tests done because of malfunctioning machines. There is, there is a, a, a firm that has been engaged to, um, to come in and to do an audit or assessment of the critical pieces of infrastructure, CT, MRI, and X-ray um, capacity at KPH. I need to get an update as to where it is because some of the, it's not that equipment isn't there. The issue is the downtime because of age. 
uh, which is why I suspect they have taken a decision around a new one when they have concluded that the old one would have served its useful life. Others could be repaired, but I would need to get an update as to where exactly they are. But I know it's been... The Combined Disabilities Association says a draft is being done to make changes to the Disability Act. Executive Director of the Association, Gloria Goff, was speaking on TVJ Smile Jamaica today. O'Shane Masters reports. Executive Director of the Combined Disabilities Association, Gloria Goff, says she's disturbed that several schools are unable to accommodate students with disabilities. She pointed to the recent case involving a wheelchair student who has been admitted to Merle Grove High School. Okay, we'll try to see what can be done. Yep. And if we can't resolve the issue because the child needs the education, then we'll, but first of all, speak with the Ministry of Education. There's a special education unit that you can go to or find an organization of persons with disabilities or for persons with disabilities that can give some guidance. Yeah. So I'm just saying the, the, the approach might have been the wrong way around. Yeah. She says that the association has approximately 6,000 disabled members, while the Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities has 1,500. Ms. Goff says while there have been some improvements over the years, Jamaica is still not where it ought to be. She argues that the issue is more than just physical. We're talking about more than ramps. You know, we're talking about what if the child goes to the school, although I know that the Ministry of Education said they were going to include bathrooms. But we need to talk about the bathrooms. We need to talk about getting from one place to another. So it's not just about entry, sorry. <clears throat> it's not just about entry. It's about being able to move about, to go anywhere within a building, within an environment that you need to go. In 2022, the Disability Act came into effect, but Ms. Goff says key amendments are needed. For example, I think um, we need more to be said about how you focus on children um, in the Act, although it covers everybody. Yeah, We need to look more at um, even the transportation section, I think, needs some expansion because it's very brief and um, I know codes of practice will pick up on some of the missing areas huh? because there are going to be codes of practice. There are some already that have been drafted. Machine Masters, TVJ News. One woman to every one man in politics. That's the appeal being made by the People's National Party Women's Movement. In celebrating its 50th anniversary, the group hosted a conference at the Cedar Grove Academy in Portmore, St. Catherine, earlier this week. Karen Simpson reports. We are not here to take up space. We are here to create space. There's more work to be done to achieve gender equality in politics. That's according to President of the PNP's Women's Movement, Patricia Duncan Sutherland. She's proposing that every leadership committee and executive should compromise of at least 50% women. We passed that resolution today in our conference. We had a long discussion about what it takes to have gender parity. But it's not just gender parity to have 50% women to take up space. Because we want a real partnership. We want a partnership, so we're looking for the partnership to make the 50% happen. And we are looking for the partnership to make Jamaica the space that it can be. Because we cannot do it without us, and we can't do it without you. While she wants more female representation in politics, there's also a call for more young men to get more involved. It is time for Jamaica to look at Jamaica's problem and how we solve it. Because there is still work to be done about the empowerment of women, but we cannot continue to leave our boys behind. For his part, PNP's President Mark Golding says his party has begun work to increase women representation in local government. Indeed, we're going through a candidate selection process now, and I know the General Secretary and I are always seek, seek, seeking to find ways that we can increase 
the numbers of women who will be representing the party going forward. And we have seen some women coming to the fore, and we have more to do in that regard. A record 30 women from both parties contested the last general election. 18 were victorious, pushing the percentage of women in the Jamaican parliament to a record 28.5%. Kerry and Simpson, TVJ News. It's time for a break. Stay with us. More stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News. Some employees of St. Anne-based tourist attraction Mystic Mountain are now on strike. This even as tourists from two cruise ships are now at the popular attraction. It's understood that rides are being operated by the management team. Company representatives have refused to comment on the matter. Tourism officials in the parish are also mum on the issue. Mystic Mountain is now in receivership after defaulting on bond payments during the pandemic. Pandemic. TVJ News understands employees are disgruntled as they are unsure of their status when the transfer of ownership is completed. Three persons were shot to fatally near the Spanish Town Examination Depot along Job Lane in St. Catherine. Dead are 66-year-old Trevor Robinson from a Job Lane address and 48-year-old Delroy Grant from Irish Pen. Reports are that the men were standing near the depot when men traveling in a white Suzuki minivan drove up and fired several shots at them. They were later pronounced dead at hospital. A woman also who sustained minor injuries during the incident. Sources told TVJ News that Delroy Grant was the intended target. It's now time for the Business Minute. In a joint statement, CEO Patrick Hilton and Deputy CEO Dennis Cohen says they could not sit quietly and allow their integrity to be questioned. In the release, Mr. Hilton and Mr. Cohen insist they've done nothing wrong and have only accepted payments as approved by the board. A special board meeting was held on Sunday, after which the men were told by NCB Financial Group's chairman, Michael Lee Chin, that the board decided to ask them to go on leave while certain discussions regarding a negotiated separation package takes place. On the international scene, J.P. Morgan Chase says American families are building their savings accounts back up slower than they did in the past. Analysts at the bank's think tank say customers have 10 to 15 percent more money in their accounts than they did in 2019. Two years ago, top earners had enough money to continue normal spending for 43 days without any income. Now, they have just over a month's worth of spending money. That means fewer people have the resources to weather a recession than in the past. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Machine Masters. And here's a preview of what's coming up in this evening's health report. In this evening's health report, we look at the sun and the skin. Skin cancer is present in the island, though a lot of persons think that, oh, once you're black or you, you know, you're a certain complexion, you don't get skin cancers, but we do. We have many patients who actually come in at very late stage because they don't realize that the lesion that they had on their skin was actually skin cancer. Um, persons who have, um, you know, constant exposure to the sun are the ones who are more prone to have skin cancers. That's the health report in primetime news at seven. And now for today's health living tip. Wear clothing that covers your arms and legs. Wear a hat with a wide brim to shade your face, head, ears and neck. Wear sunglasses that wrap around and block both UVA and UVB rays. And use a broad spectrum sunscreen with a sun protection factor, SPF, of 15 or higher. Time now for the top regional and international stories. 
In the region, the three-member CARICOM Eminent Persons Group EPG says it will be returning to Haiti in the coming weeks to continue the work it has begun. The group, headed by former St. Lucian Prime Minister Dr. Kenny Anthony, visited the Caribbean nation from July 12 to 15 to facilitate talks between various regional groups in an effort to build consensus and allow inclusive participation in a neutral environment. On the international scene, Thailand's Constitutional Court has suspended leading prime ministerial candidate and winner of May's nationwide elections, Peter Linjaro Enrat, from being a lawmaker. The temporary suspension follows a complaint filed by the Election Commission against the Move Forward Party leader, accusing him of violating election laws for allegedly holding shares in a media company. And at least 34 people are dead and 12 injured after a bus transporting travelers collided with a vehicle in Algeria this morning. According to the police, the 34 deceased passengers burned to death as the collision was followed by a massive fire. And those are the top regional and international stories. I'm Carrie Ann Simpson. We head to a quick break. When we come back, we'll have your midday sports support with Jordan Fort.